All right, that's enough of that. Sorry. Every time I get thinking about the movie Candyman, I instantly like want to play the Philip Glass theme from the 1992 film, which carries over throughout the series. And uh, yeah, as you can tell, I love Candyman. The original, uh, directed by Bernard Rose, based on the short story The Forbidden by Clive Barker, starring Virginia Madsen, and of course, Tony Todd, magnificently, magnificently. Can't stress that enough. He is so fucking good. And so is Virginia Madsen. She's excellent as well. But man, Tony Todd, oh, he's so good as the Candyman. Um, it is a great film. It is one of my all-time favorite horror films. I, I'd make even the argument it could perhaps even be the best horror film of the 1990s. That's how much I really like that film. So when it was announced that a new Candy film was com Candyman film was coming out, uh, I was going to get in theaters, Jordan Peele was involved, and after the success of Us and Get Out, I was like, okay, maybe we're on to something here. Let's bring back the Candyman. Let's make this movie a lot more recognized because I feel like this film is severely underrated more people are kind of discovering it as the years are going on and with the new movie out more people are going to kind of go look back to the past and hopefully discover a really excellent film um but we'll, we'll see what happens because i'm not sure how this new film is going to play out because i think this is going to be a pretty divisive movie so the new film was directed by nia DaCosta, and I, as i said i was really excited to see the new film i love the original Candyman. don't care much for Candyman 2 haven't really watched Candyman 3 because i hear it's quite terrible and i've seen parts of it and yeah looking at it, i'm like there eh, doesn't seem to be much there but who knows i may actually enjoy it more than most people probably not it's probably just gonna be bad but uh i was looking forward to this new film and after leaving the theater uh i came out kind of mixed on the movie overall there's some good things about it for sure the thing is exceptionally well shot i mean this is a beautiful looking movie um great cinematography uh, it's acted fine enough. Uh, the kills are creative and they're extremely violent. And the thing, the film also does this interesting thing where it kind of builds on the lore in a unique way. And it also does some interesting things with the whole concept of urban legends and how stories kind of change over time as they're passed from generation to generations. I thought that was actually kind of clever. Um, the music itself, uh, it's not quite as good as the Philip Glass score. In fact, I don't really remember too much about the score in this film. Some elements kind of remind me a bit of like the Joker theme in The Dark Knight where it kind of does that little a little bit, but nothing that truly exceptionally stands out. And another thing I thought was really clever was the use of shadow puppetry. I thought that was kind of a unique touch. And in fact, like telling the story visually through the use of the shadow puppetry, I thought was so much more effective and so much more powerful than really anything else that takes place in the movie because it's all done kind of visually and lets the music kind of tell the story. I thought it just orchestrated the story and it like kind of added to this whole urban legend mythos. And it actually ties into kind of a little scene in within the movie. I thought the shadow puppetry stuff was exceptionally well done. So there's a lot that's done really well in this movie. Now, so I wanted to get that out of the way. It definitely feels more of like an indie horror film it's definitely gotten like an independent film vibe so i'm not exactly sure how this film is going to play with more a more mainstream audience crowd i see this being a pretty divisive movie uh to some some people are going to come away really loving this thing and loving kind of what it did with the lore of the candy man and just kind of like the messages involved with the film because there is there is some social commentary and i will say this it's not subtle it's certainly like whereas the original felt a lot more subtle with this message which is something i kind of prefer if you're going to have a message i'd rather have it be a little bit more subtle and you have to kind of figure it out whereas this movie that they kind of uh hit you over the head with it i mean it's a pretty it's pretty simple to figure out like you know right away and then they sit and they talk about it and then they show it again and it gets to the point where you're just like you could i i, I get it I, I get what you're trying to say but you don't have to kind of like throw it in my face as much as you do. What made the original, I think, really great was it was there and you had to kind of figure it out. Like you could kind of interpret things to like in, in little different fashions. But the, the commentary messages were still certainly there in the original film, but it's more cleverly interwoven with the story. Here, it's really kind of in your face. And that's definitely going to be off-putting for some people towards the point where it's like, okay, we get it. We, we, we get what you're trying to say. And even kind of towards the end of the film, it's like, all right, we, we, we get it. We, we get what you're trying to say. Um, so I think a little bit more subtlety would have definitely helped uh, the film. Again, it's, you're dealing with, you know, really topical issues in this film, but I feel like a little more subtlety and a little bit more 
restraint would have orchestrated things a lot better. Like the shadow puppetry, like the shadow puppetry was a great use to kind of get your message across. I thought that was far more effective than when, say, characters would go around kind of talking about it and then just telling, literally, I felt like they were kind of going to look right at the camera and say, this is bad, which, you know, everybody knows it's it's bad. But yeah, so well, that said, uh, what else didn't really work for me in this movie? Uh, the characters themselves. Now, acting is fine, certainly. Like, there's some good moments from Yaya Abdul-Mateen, but it's not really, like, the most likable or interesting protagonist this time around. In fact, there's kind of this moment where a murder happens, and you could maybe attribute this to the fact that, like, he gets stung by this bee just kind of randomly. There's no real setup to it whatsoever. And then he starts to kind of get infected and turn into, like, this new Candyman. Because the thing with this movie is... It's not just one Candyman, it's a whole, they call it like the hive, there's like a hive of Candymen throughout this thing, basically throughout history, like, you know, Candyman is based on like historical violence that, that took place uh, over the course of, you know, from the original Candyman onward, although Helen Lyle doesn't seem to be an active member of the Candyman's hive, unless she kind of went on to do her own thing, so I'm not sure what's going on there, is this, or like what really qualifies to kind of make somebody a Candyman, because with um, the, the main character in this film, Anthony, it's clear how they can become the Candyman because they're kind of linked directly with the legend, whereas other people, it, I don't know if they really were because it, it didn't like explain how all the different members of the Hive came to be. We get an explanation for one uh, who was like the, the first, this one of the other members of like the Hive. I guess I'll have to get into spoilers here, but overall consensus, I think it's kind of a mixed bag in a movie. Um, characters weren't all that likable. They're all these like really uptight uh, Chicago art fair scene type people. Uh, I can't connect with anybody like that in your movies. Everyone's just kind of like really high on themselves and really up their own assholes. Uh, so there really isn't no likability to anybody in this movie. And when somebody dies, I just, I just really couldn't care less about what happens. Whereas in the original, I still kind of cared about Helen. Yeah, she, she kind of goes in like a place she probably shouldn't and tries to be like this big hero and exposing everything, but she faces consequences for her actions in that film. It doesn't really go well for her at all, let's just say. And um, so, yeah, but this well, this movie, I felt like Anthony, the main character, was kind of just like a less interesting version of Helen Lyle. Although, like, it, the movie definitely goes more body horror with, with some of the stuff here. So I thought that was a neat twist on it all. Like, I mean, but also it kind of left me in the, sitting in the theater just questioning, like, why doesn't this guy just go to the hospital? Eventually he does, but like after he gets stung by this bee, uh, his arm starts to pretty much decay over the course of the movie. Like he doesn't go to the hospital like right away, unless it was like the bee that magically stung him and infected him with something right away, which see, it just didn't, that didn't quite work for me because I mean, Helen in the original, it made sense how she kind of came to be because it's kind of like a gradual thing. Like she summons the Candyman. Anthony in this film, he just takes a picture of like a church and then all of a sudden he gets stung by this bee and then just that's that's pretty much it um then you have this other character who's just knows seems to know everything there is to know about the whole Candyman legend and he tells Anthony about what happened how like when he was younger there was this uh guy who used to pass out candy to the neighborhood kids and then he was wrongfully accused for what happened but granted if I were a kid I saw a guy with you know like like a hook almost for a hand it's not quite a hook it's like an amputee arm thing whatever they kind of call it uh creepily stepping out of the walls humming and then like reaching out with candy like this i'd scream too in fact i'd be absolutely terrified if i saw i'd bolt the hell out of there and you know the movie does kind of like show with some of that kind of stuff with characters where like one character is just like trying to find anthony his girlfriend at one point in the movie and she kind of goes there she opens the door she's like a dark staircase she's like uh-uh i ain't going in there i'm like okay that's pretty smart i, I kind of laughed a little bit there there's a few kind of funny gags throughout this movie like but like not everything really landed i'm not quite laughing throughout this thing i mean it's more of a serious movie with little bits of humor kind of sprinkled throughout it but then there's just kind of like some awkward stuff like at one point uh the main character anthony who is the uh the baby that was uh, going to be sacrificed in the very first film. So this is the baby from the original movie, all grown up, because the Candyman was going to choose him for some story. And then years later, Destiny kind of brings him back, and he's being set up to become the new Candyman. So Candyman, there's there's a whole high of them, and Candyman's legend is kind of being turned into like like a dark, heroic angel of sorts against different types of uh, injustices going on in the world. And 
see that could work but earlier in the film we have this character um who becomes obsessed with the candy man trying to bring him back because he he, he doesn't like um all the stuff that's kind of going on in the world he wants the candy man to like be kind of changed a bit to kind of like deal with these sort of things but this same character i guess full spoilers from this point onward so uh if you don't want any more yeah but just you know watch from here but this character sister who is happened to be like african-american was killed by one of the candy men and i'm just left scratching my head why would you want to bring that back they killed your sister and your friend for just summoning the candy man which kind of goes against the whole thing like if candy man's supposed to be about like you know killing kind of people that deal with kind of racial injustice in this kind of new take why would he target african-americans it, it it doesn't i i don't get what he's trying to do with that it seems like they're trying to change the candy man to be something else kind of entirely whereas in the original film like tony todd's candy man he killed anyone anyone who got in his way he would kill like look what he did to uh bernadette look what he did to everyone else that just kind of came across him he killed everybody and that made him more terrifying rather than just being some like the candy man is a tragic you know figure of sorts like because obviously daniel robitaille uh robitaille ugh. tony todd um he fell in love with a woman named caroline as shown in candy man 2 which this movie they kind of seemingly changed things around when uh the one guy's telling the whole legend although granted you could argue that he's saying it in a way to kind of manipulate the main character anthony to kind of like go through the motions and set things up because beforehand in candy man 2 Candyman fell in love with a woman named Caroline and then she got pregnant and then her father found out and he, they, they all hunted him down, sawed off his arm, st got him stung to death and all that. But she was just like, no, no, no. And, you know, he, he goes into the mirror and all that. That's how he kind of becomes Candyman, his soul and all that. Uh, go watch Candyman too if you want to know more about that. But there was still that, that, that love there between the two characters. Here, it, that's why he targeted, that's part of the reason why he targeted Helen because Helen reminded him of like his long lost love so like the candy man kind of takes elements of the fan of the opera and they also kind of play around with things with the whole mirror thing and what else should i say what was it so again i just saw this thing last night so i kind of need a time to process it some things didn't quite add up to me okay so one of the characters at the very beginning of the movie like one of the other candy men uh it starts out the movie starts out in cabrini green 1977 and so we had this other guy who's the candy man, the one passing out candies that was kind of creepy. He gets killed early on, and then he kind of is the candy man who stalks Anthony, which makes me wonder, okay, so we have all these different candy men. Why is it that the Tony Todd candy man appeared in all the other movies and stalked everyone since then? Like, why are we not hearing about this till now? Like, why is it that this guy is stalking everybody? Why don't we get the Tony Todd candy man? Because the Tony Todd candy man is the original candy man. You still kind of see him in this film it's he basically is like luke skywalker in the force awakens where he does absolutely nothing the whole movie until like the last like minute of the film and it is extremely disappointing because tony todd's candy man is so good we i feel robbed of seeing him on the big screen i would have rather preferred that to this other candy man that we see throughout the film who doesn't really say anything doesn't really do much um it's still a bit creepy in some ways but like tony todd just had this great on-screen presence he is cold and calculating uh, he's such he feels like such an afterthought in this movie and i feel like had you had him go on throughout this whole movie you know we get to hear his deep booming voice there's like this like aura around him and this absolutely like fantastic on-screen presence i feel robbed of that in this movie because there's no real characters that kind of give me that you know fascinating on-screen presence that you know tony todd had or like the on-screen presence of virginia madsen uh yaya abdul mateen is a good actor i've seen him in all sorts of things very versatile but in this film um he's kind of falls a slightly a bit flat for me in, in this movie i think it could be could have had a little bit more personality but i guess like they're kind of going with the flying over he kind of decays and you know kind of goes crazy a little bit like there's some good acting moments in the movie but i don't know it just he wasn't the most interesting character this time around it was kind of unfortunately like unfortunately maybe that's just the script and the way he was kind of handled here i thought helen he kind of felt like helen but just a little less interesting per se like he's not bad acting wise in the movie i just like just didn't really do it for me um same with pretty much most of the cast like some you had some characters trying to be the comedic relief um you had a lot of obnoxious people who got killed that was fun to watch though and like some ridiculous death scenes then there's one there's one scene you probably could have cut out entirely like 
randomly there's this scene with these girls in this bathroom and i feel like this movie definitely went under some reshoots and you can kind of tell like some things just don't really like add up or say like why are we focusing on these girls oh because they had one th this character popped up for like five seconds on screen um just happened to be in the art exhibit taking pictures and then just randomly they show up that was just to kind of have like extra gore in the movie it feels like i'm like why are we even following these characters you can kind of cut them from the film entirely and it doesn't move the narrative at all in fact like it's it, you get some cool graphic violence but it just feels rather unnecessary you probably could have cut this character from the film entirely and you wouldn't miss anything like that whole sequence just felt entirely pointless whereas in the original the violence in the story was kind of telling a point there like it all kind of flowed in unison that bit i'm like yeah it's cool to get some more violence but i want a plot purpose for it so that was just kind of a bit unnecessary the ending itself um it it ends really abruptly and i was really disappointed in that like the candy man comes in he's just like tell everyone it's tony todd like i wait this whole movie just to see tony todd back in the candy man attire and you get this kind of shitty looking CGI DH version of him like swarmed by bees. And I'm just left sitting there like, oh, no, you you robbed me of Tony Todd throughout the whole film. Like I got excited when he popped up on screen because I'm waiting this whole movie because I wanted to see Tony Todd again because Tony Todd is fucking awesome as the Candyman. But I feel like we've been kind of robbed. So, yeah, like uh, the new Candyman, it's definitely like got some it's production wise it's very well done it's shot beautifully like the directing is quite good um and there's i like how it kind of expands on the lore a bit but why are we following like the Candyman from cabrini and green in the 70s when you could have just put tony todd in there because otherwise why wasn't this the Candyman stalking everyone like you know why wasn't this version stalking helen i don't know that just feels like just playing it in my head like there's no reason you couldn't have had Tony Todd throughout the movie. And plus, like, his deep, booming, chilly, vo chilling voice talking about how he's going to, like, make Anthony, like, the new Candyman. It would have tied closer within the original film. I think it would have been stronger that way. But instead, we get this other Candyman who has no real good on-screen presence. We have this guy who's obsessed with the Candyman and wants to bring him back. Is like, and this guy who's all against, what is it, police brutality. He wants to go through that again put anthony through the same thing i don't know like the, the, i don't know how he knows that the ritual is going to work this way and really where he kind of learned everything to begin with it just so it just doesn't quite add up with, to me in, in fact i think that could have been because this movie looks like a lot of scenes were cut from it there's that one scene in the trailer where the one guy's going ah, ah, ah like that wasn't in the movie so I, I feel like a lot of this movie was cut or there were some reshoots kind of done to this thing um there's no real jump scares in this thing which i appreciate they definitely like took their time on uh, added some suspense and I, and I like that too and the kills are quite good too like there's one scene with in like this art museum with the whole mirror dimension thing i thought that was handled quite well um there's one really awesome kill where anthony kind of goes and meets the snooty art critic and yeah like pretty much most people in this movie are really snooty and pr pretty much awful like he meets this really uptight art critic and he kind of leaves like because he's just completely unhinged he sees himself kind of becoming the new candy man and then as he leaves the apartment you just kind of like this this pan away shot and you just see just this woman just kind of like levitate in the air and just get like smashed up against the glass i thought that was a really effective kill so the kills are quite effective and quite good in here the movie's beautifully shot um score doesn't hold a candle to what they did with the whole philip glass score in the original film and there's some good atmosphere in here. Like, it, I feel like with maybe like one more rewrite and maybe just a little bit tweaking of things, a little bit more subtlety and more Tony Todd, this could have been a really amazing movie. But as it stands, I think this is kind of more of a mixed bag. I still think it's good to kind of go check it out if you're a fan of the original, kind of make, uh, judge it for yourself. Because I feel like this is going to be one of those movies that people are going to talk about a bit and be wondering like, oh, like it's going to be hit or miss for most people. Um, I don't see this being overwhelmingly positive. I, I don't see it being overwhelmingly negative. I just see this one as more of a mixed bag. And it's certainly better than the other two sequels um, in terms of the craft and everything behind that. But I still prefer the original. So, yeah, those are my thoughts on it. Really wish we would have gotten more Tony Todd. Uh, I hope this thing does well enough to where we do get a sequel because they set up enough with the lore that I think it could hold up quite well to get something kind of unique and continue the story hopefully with more Tony Todd uh, because he's severely underutilized unfortunately in this film for no good reason at all um because yeah like because we see this other candidate like you should have just used Tony Todd you could have done something really cool with it I mean you can still have the building up the lore and all that but 
put more Tony Todd in the movie. Like, he's so good. Like, why don't you want to include him? So, yeah, and that's just the most unfortunate thing about the film for me is just the severe lack of Tony Todd because his on-screen presence is severely missing. Um, and that's what really helped make those other Candyman movies stand out was his performance. It's like having a movie about, it's like having a Nightmare on Elm Street movie with Freddy Krueger only showing up for the last, like, minute of the movie and you have some other Freddy Krueger and dream imposters or dream killers or something coming back for revenge. That's kind of where I'm at in this thing. I'm like, I'd rather just have Freddy throughout the film you know, Tony Todd, because he's really, really good. So yeah. All right. Those are all my thoughts on Candyman. I know this is quite a long after the movie, but I still think it's worth checking out. But it's still kind of a overall a mixed bag for me. I didn't really love it. Didn't really hate it. Um, it's just gonna be one of those movies that it's gonna be kind of mixed for most people. That's that's the way I see it. So there you go. Those are my thoughts on uh, Candyman. Uh, what did you think of it? Tell me what you thought in the comments section down below. And tell me what you thought of the Candyman franchise as a whole. What do you think of the original? What do you think of Candyman Farewell to the Flesh? What do you think of Day of the Dead? And what do you think of the new film? Tell me what you thought of it. And uh, yeah, like this video, share it with your friends, subscribe to the YouTube channel for more content. And as always, take care now. Bye-bye then. And I will see you all in the next video. Peace.